you've been working really well and I've been looking with delight at how much working you're putting down so it's not like just an answer appears out of nowhere. I can see why you've done it, so big thumbs up on that. I've given these last four examples because each one kind of highlights um, they all have kind of a weird curveball in them, slightly different ones. And so I just want to sort of go through each one. If you're in the middle of a question right now, maybe leave a bit of space to finish that. Um, but I will run out of space eventually, so you may like to jot some of this down as I go. But I just wanted to point you out that, uh, yeah, these are questions which look very similar to the other ones, but there are things I want us to know. So let's have a look at question five together. It's log of, and then you've got this quadratic inside the brackets up here, okay? Now, the first thing I want to point out is, and I've left these two previous examples on the board, this question five is going to use the chain rule in much the same way that we did it here, and even similar to that one over there. However, which chain rule you might have noticed, and it's why I put it in a different color. It can be quite tiresome to write the whole u equals this, dy on du, du on dx, it's just long, right? Now it is helpful, it makes it so you don't confuse things in your head. You guys know what it's like when you try and keep all the stuff up here and then it just gets jumbled onto the page. However, once you're comfortable, you should actually be able to say, especially using a formula like this, like it's quicker, it's more efficient. Don't feel like you need to go the long way around every time. So here, I'm going to go immediately to an F dash on F situation. This is the f of x, or the u of x, or you can call it anything you like. Can you just read off the derivative of that for me? 2x plus 5, nailed it. There's the numerator, and the denominator is going to be whatever was there to begin with. So in this case, it's x squared plus 5x plus 6. So it's really nice, like, you're finished. You don't have to do any more. Just like differentiating exponentials is quite easy, logs, same deal, okay? Now I'm going to leave a little bit of space under there, you'll see why in a second, before we have a look at 6 or return to 5. This one here might give you a little bit of pause. What did I say? Plus 1, minus 4. Okay, now the reason why you might pause is because you're like, oh, gross, it's a quotient. So when you do your f dash on f, it's not quite so simple as just saying f dash is a nice easy thing like that f dash of this is a mess, okay? And this is where I need you to remember, and you've seen this before in the last couple of weeks. Before you go to start differentiating, sometimes there's a way that you can rewrite to make it nicer to work with, right? Think back to our starter questions from today. Is there a way before you differentiate that you can rewrite this to make it much easier to work with? Abbas, what do you reckon? Bring the x minus 4 to the top. So when you say, I agree, I think we need to do something with x minus 4, it's the fact that it's a fraction that's gross. What do you mean by bring it to the top? Like, so you move it to the top and then in brackets you change the index to minus 1. Oh, okay, so you're suggesting, is this what you're suggesting? We write this as log of x plus 1 and then x minus 4 to the negative 1. Is that what you're suggesting? Okay. Now I've seen this trick pulled a couple of times within the room. I'm going to suggest it is correct but there's not a huge advantage you get out of it because when you do product of all this, guess what? It's still a pain in the butt, okay? L slightly less, maybe, but product rule and question rule are really the same thing, just dressed up differently, especially when your index is negative, so it'll just be gross, okay? There's another way, this is a legitimate way of rewriting this, but there's still another way of rewriting it that will make this, like I promise, it'll just fall out. You'll see the derivative, like, you'll write it as easily as you wrote this one. Any suggestions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this one log with division, you can break into two different logs. Now, usually we would say that's worse, right? But watch this with me. Can you see now how much easier this is to work with? Hello, who are you looking for? Okay. Yep, I'll let, them, I'll let them know at the end of this. Thank you. Okay. So, this is really important by the way. I've seen a number of you do something similar to this. You're like simplifying and then you say, oh, I'm now up to the step, where I, the step where I differentiate. And so you just say equals. If I'm about to differentiate, is the derivative just equal to that? It's not, is it? So let's make sure we write this properly. This is dy on dx. Okay, now this thing, you barely even need to think. 
This is going to be f dash on f, which in this case is 1, there's the f dash, over x plus 1, there's the f. And then you just do it again. So here's the new f, so f dash is also 1, and then here's the new f over here. I'm finished. I mean, you could put them together, you get a common denominator, but, but, but I'm okay with this. Okay? And the reason why I left a gap up here is because you can pull the same kind of trick up here, can't you? Did you notice that? Look at this thing. It doesn't look like a product at the moment, but you can fairly easily write it as one. How would I write this as a product? It'd be log of... 2x plus 5 minus log Hold on, just be careful. This is the thing I'm factorizing, yeah? Oh. This thing, x squared plus 5x plus 6. It's a nice easy quadratic I think you can deal with. X plus 2, and then X plus 3. Perfect. Okay. So if that's another way of rewriting this, I could also write it as two separate logs. Do you see that? And so therefore when you differentiate, it'd be 1 over X plus 2, 1 over X plus 3. If you took those two fractions and put them together, sure enough, you'll get this. Same result, but it's like less mental work. Okay. All right, so just be mindful and don't forget as well, you know, there's a plus here, there's a minus there. Now, for question three and four, there's some really sneaky stuff in here. So I'm going to ask you, I put, you, put your laptop lids down before, but I want you to bring them back up and just get Desmos ready for me. I'm not going to tell you what to put in it yet, but we will come back to it in a second. I just want it to be primed. Okay, why did I change color in YouTube? Now, like I said, each of these has a teeny tiny curveball in it and Desmos is gonna help us work out the curveball for both of them. So, question seven, y equals log of three x. Okay, now if we just use the rule we've been using, something weird comes out. What will f dash on f, don't simplify it, what will f dash on f be equal to in this case? 3 on 3x, which of course, some of you are already mentally simplifying. You're like, oh, that's just 1 over x. Now hopefully that's like, some of you say, oh, that's cool, great, it's simple, I'm done, move on to the next question. And others of you look at it and say, wait, what? What? Like, this is not log x, which I know has this derivative, but that looks pretty right. Like, there's not much to screw up here. Like, it's correct. How can this have the same derivative as this. Aren't they like pretty different functions? We're gonna see that actually they're not as different as you think. On Desmos, can, you, uh, can I ask you to put both of these in for me? Graph log x, and if you type in ln, it should do the job for you. And then put in ln of 3x. And you should see it, right? Let me just pull it open here. Yeah, okay, so hopefully it gave you a bit of a head start on me, but there you go. Now, sure enough, when you look at these, it's a bit hard to see, but these are the same graph, except one's just moved up. Now, to prove it, and you can actually do this a bit easier than I can, but I'm going to grab this ruler out. If you get a ruler out, or even a pen, and put it against your computer screen, watch this, right? Anywhere you go, Right? Anywhere you go along here, can you see it's the same distance vertically? It does look like the graphs get closer together. But if you just look up and down, take your ruler, put it against the screen. Over here, it's the same distance all the way along. In other words, these are the same graph just shifted vertically. And that's a really important phrase. It's shifted vertically, which means the gradient hasn't changed. And I can prove it. Pick your pen back up again. Underneath where you're putting this working, y equals log of 3x. I'm going to pull my question 5 trick on it. See this? Right? It's a product so I can break it into two logs. Right? How would I break that into two logs? It'd be y equals ln3 plus ln x. Now log 3, you've got to calculate it. I mean, Desmos is open. I'm guessing it's something like 1.0 something or other. 1.09. There you go. So this is just, 1.1 uh, I think is a better rounding, it's just a number, 1.1. It's a weird number, but it's just a number. So you can see these two graphs share a lot more than you think, right? Just one of them 
One of them is the other one moved up a little bit. And when you move it, the gradient doesn't change. Position and gradient are different like that. Make sense? All right, here comes the last one. Question four. We are differentiating, and again, you'll need um, Desmos ready there for a second, log of x squared, and the squared is inside, okay? Help me out again. Can we do f dash on f? What do you get, Daniel? 2x over x, 2x over x squared? Yeah. Looks good. And then, of course, you can simplify further. Right? You can say, oh, 2 over x. Now, can I ask you to go right back to the start of your working today? You remember I told you that the derivative of log x it's kind of 1 over x, but I said there was a thing over here, there was a restriction. It isn't all of 1 over x. Which part is it? It's the x is greater than 0 part, like so. Now, all the way through, this has kind of been implied, that it's like not all of that, it's just a part. But now I want you to look back at this guy. Can you go to Desmos and put this into the graph? Log of and make sure the squared is inside. You might need to use brackets to make sure. Do you see what's going on? What's happened? Can you explain to me what we're looking at? Michael, what do you think? Uh, it's been reflected. So there is a reflection, isn't there? There's a horizontal reflection across the y-axis. Now my question to you is, why? Like, uh, or maybe I should say x. Where, where did it come from, right? Why, why is there this other version of the log curve on the other side? Anyone tell me? What, what do you reckon, Richard? Yeah. Yeah, so when you square, right, you get this symmetry between left and right, okay? Now, if you go to your calculator, can you get it out first, or put it into Desmos if you like. If you put in something like ln of, and put a negative number in there, any ne negative number you like, like negative one, for instance, what does your calculator tell you? It's not very happy with you, is it? What does it tell you? Error. It says error. Okay, now I need you to understand why. It's the thinking that matters here, not the answer. Okay? ln is short for log base e, and then I've got this number in here. Remember, right back to the start, right? This means e to the power of something, e to the power of something gives you negative 1. e to the power of nothing gives you negative 1, at least not the numbers we know about, right? If e to the power of, I can't think of any number, gives you negative 1, then that's why your calculator hands back to you, sorry dude, I've, I've got nothing for you, okay? However, when you square, this negative 1 gets squared, and what does it become? One, and suddenly we're back in a normal land that your calculator is quite happy with, right? I know what to do with that. It's going to be, uh, well, in this case, that would be zero because e to the power of zero is one, okay? So that's why you get this other side of the graph, which is a little bit weird, but actually very important. So this, it exists everywhere, and it's like a really classic curveball that the HSC loves to throw at people to say, are you really paying attention? Because this is actually different to all the rest, okay?